It's Professor Pumpernickel here. I'm in the laboratory tonight. It's quite late. I'm packing the car because I'm off on a journey. Yes, a socially distanced meeting with Ian the Storyteller and Gakko. And uh, outside, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but there's a thunderstorm rolling. It's flashing and banging out there. It's my uh, favourite kind of weather is a big storm. Yeah, that's exciting weather to Professor Pumpernickel. I don't know if you know this already, but clouds are made of water vapour. When water vapour rises up into the sky, into the colder levels of atmosphere, the water then reaches what is called the dew point. All of that water vapour then turns to liquid water, very tiny droplets of liquid water. So uh, that's what I'm going to show you right now. And then I'm going to show you another kind of weather phenomenon. So uh, take a look at the cloud maker machine. It uses Hydrogen peroxide, which uh, I don't want you guys ever to be touching. It's quite a dangerous chemical. That's why I've got the goggles on. If it splashes in my eyes, oh, I have to go to the hospital quickly. So, hydrogen peroxide and a little bit of potassium permanganate. So I'm going to drop the potassium permanganate into the hydrogen peroxide. What that's going to do, it's going to instantly split the hydrogen peroxide. I mean, it's called hydrogen peroxide because, well, it looks a little like water. Yes, no smell, no color, no taste. But you wouldn't want to drink it. No, 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 no. It's not water. Well, not yet anyway. I'm going to change it into water. You see, it's called hydrogen peroxide because it has an extra oxygen atom than water has. Water is H2O. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2 an extra oxygen atom. That's what makes it volatile and dangerous. Oxygen is a really reactive chemical. So let's release that extra oxygen atom. I'm going to actually improve the quality of the air in my workshop. Uh, so I will release a whole bunch of oxygen. And in the process also, we're going to get some water vapor condensing into a cloud. Take a look. So I, uh, potassium permanganate, the hydrogen peroxide, there you go, and then we're going to just drop it in and I'm going to retreat to a safe distance. Here we go. Three, two, one. Here it comes. All right, check it out. <laughs> that is a cloud. Yeah. Professor Pumpernickel's cloud machine. Water vapor and pure oxygen. And outside right now, there's a huge cloud with crashes of thunder flying out with bolts of electricity and lightning. It's uh, pretty spectacular. So I'm going to make this a quite a quick video because I want to go and watch the fireworks show that Mother Nature has put on for me tonight. So, ooh, that smells nice. Right, so watch this. This is my tornado machine. And a tornado is really essentially a mixture of hot air and air which is cooler okay so you've got cool air and warm air quite a bit of moisture mixed in there so there's quite a lot of humidity mixed in but you've got high pressure air and low pressure air okay we need to create some warm air in the laboratory so I'm going to do that by creating a little flame here Yep, don't play with fire, children. It is hot. It's not hot underneath. It's warm at the sides, but it's much hotter on top. And that's telling me that the hot air is rising. What we have going on here, which uh, you can't actually see with your eyes, is the atmosphere surrounding the fire, okay? So outside here where my hands are is relatively cold in relation to the fire. The air which is closer to the fire becomes really warm and active, okay? And now this begins to rise up. Hot air likes to rise. And cold air is the opposite of hot air, so cold air likes to fall down. So, the hot air is rising, but that leaves a big gap, you know? Uh, so more air has to come in and fill the gap where the hot air has risen. So that is replaced with more air, which coincidentally is next to the flames. So what's going to happen then? Yep, that hair 
also warms up and rises. The next bunch of air comes in to fill the gap and that heats up and rises up. And this continues forever and ever until I put out the flames. This is what we call convection. A big letter C, convection. Now don't mistake that with confection with an F. That's sweets and lollipops. I don't see sweets and lollipops floating around. The movement of hot and cold air, and that's what's happening outside right now. Throughout the day, all of the warm air has risen up high, up to the colder atmosphere where it has condensed into water. Yes, into a big cloud. So what I need to do is add my convection basket. This is the convection basket. So now the air is still moving in and still rising up, still moving in and still rising up. But this time the air has to come through all of these little holes in the basket. And now you will see convection with your own eyes. As the air comes in, it goes through the holes. And as I spin it around, something really cool begins to happen. Check that out. A fire tornado. Oh yeah. Well, I'm glad that's gone out. It was getting pretty big. So now I'm going to show you a device which you can build at home. It's pretty easy to do. Some of you may have seen it before in my shows. Yes, it's the smoke ring blaster. A barrel of mango chutney. It is empty, of course, because I've eaten all the mango chutney. I had to eat it all today. All of it. Yes, just to show you this video. Now, at the bottom here, I've cut a hole in the bottom of the barrel. And as you can see, I've washed it out. It's nice and clean on the inside. On the opposite end, where there used to be a big lid, I've replaced it with a flexible bag and I've just put a bit of string on there to create a little handle you see and what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with some smoke now this is what you saw at the start of the video smoke rings you can make it with any size or any shaped uh, hollow object as long as it's hollow you can use a square cardboard box you can use a small paper cup start small and work your way up to as large as you possibly can. There's no limit to the largest size you can get to. Now, let's fill this with smoke and we'll see what happens when we punch the smoke out again. Here comes the smoke ring. I can barely see a thing now. <laughs> Look at the state of this place. Here's the trick that you need to use when building your smoke ring blaster. Okay, the hole at the bottom needs to be smaller than your entire circumference of the barrel. Okay, because then you're just kind of chopping the end off and you don't want to do that. You're not going to get a smoke ring. You're not going to build up any pressure inside. This is effectively, this is what is called a choke. And so when I push the bag like this, all of the smoke tries to come out. Okay, but it gets kind of caught up on the inside of the lip here, the choke, and it begins to spin, it begins to rotate. Now I'm not gonna tell you which direction it rotates around in. I want you to tell me which direction it does rotate. And I want you to put the answer in the comment section. This is a little more difficult this week, okay? so. This is where you have to build your device, your smoke ring blaster, to try and get the answer. You have to be observant. You have to use your eyes and your brain and see if you can see which way round these rings are spinning. Are they going clockwise? Are they going anti-clockwise? Well, I'm not gonna give you any clues. I want you to build one and put your answer in the comment section below because then I will pick one of the winners in next week's competition. Well, it's not time to end the video just yet. Of course, we've got to announce the winner from last week. Uh, my question last week in the competition was, what is the name of the hormone released in the brain when we fall in love? The correct answer is oxytocin. So congratulations to all you people who have entered into the competition. There's quite a lot of you. Yes, it's good to see. So uh, everybody got the correct answer apart from Ross. Ross, who used to work at Eureka, called it 
fool juice. No, Ross, it's not fool juice. It's oxytocin, okay? So I have to announce the winner then. It is James and Christopher. Congratulations, James and Christopher for uh, giving me the correct answer of oxytocin. Remember to put your answers down in the bottom of the comments section here on this video. Again, that question, in which direction do these smoke rings rotate? Is it clockwise? Is it anti-clockwise? Well, I can tell you it's neither of those. You've got to work it out. I'll see you next week. Goodbye for now.